My name is John Kamar. I'm a director of the Machine Intelligence Institute of Africa. I'm also the CEO for Cortex Africa and also founder for Jamboro, which is a fintech platform um, in East, East and West Africa as well, and uh, running a number of uh, AI-driven projects across the continent. My name is Jason Eisen. I'm the founder and CEO of Utu Technologies. We're based in Nairobi, Kenya. We do AI for trust. So we're really focused on trying to understand how, why, and when humans actually trust each other, given that the way we trust in the real world is so different from how we're asked to trust online. And that's actually why John and I are sitting here together. Uh, John's company, Jumbo Row, has been one of the major clients for our company, Utu, understanding how trust can influence the financial inclusion space and open up access to finance for the whole continent. So trust, I mean, how many people think about AI and trust in the same breath? I mean, that's like something you should explain a little bit more, like a super layman's term to sure. our audience. <laughs> the, well, the way we see it is in the real world, trust is something that happens between people, right? If I ask you, who do you trust? I can guarantee how you'll answer. I trust myself. I trust my family. I trust my friends. Okay, maybe some of your friends. Uh, <laughs> the question is why we're asked to trust based on totally disparate things online comparing to how we trust in the real world, especially in today's age when all of that type of information can be understood and modeled at an individual level to not just understand that this is the best service provider for somebody in general, but this is the best service provider for you as an individual at this exact moment. And that's really what we've been focused on. I think the needs of the financial space uh, and understanding a borrower and a lender and what makes a good match is super important right now. No, I think so. I mean, I think one of the things to, to think about when you think about AI is also a lot of people kind of get completely discombobulated <clears throat> when you talk about AI, but kind of to break it down a little bit, if you think about a small child, the day it was, you know, the child is born, you know, it has no data, has no information. The more data it feeds on, on the world, the more intelligent it becomes, and it begins to understand, and it begins to access different parts of the memory, and it begins to access different parts of the cortex, the brain, to then begin to make decisions, to, to decide what they, and this is the same idea of AI. AI is really about, you know, when you build this information system that begins to, you know, you impute data, and it begins to use that data to actually help you understand what to do better. That's as simple as it is, you know, in, in very basic layman's term. And I think that's the first thing that we're trying to communicate in Africa, that it, it's not some crazy technology that's going to, you know, drive you insane or, you know... I think a lot of people come at it from the technology first rather than use case first. What's the output? What's the benefit that's actually being delivered to the end consumer, whether that end consumer is an individual trying to find a service that they need, or if it's a business trying to find new customers or engage their customers more. But starting from that use case and the end benefit and working backwards to some extent, how do we actually deliver that value uh, quite simply and straightforward without all the buzz and hype? And if you think about it with Jamber, what we were doing, um, where how we first met, most of the clients are people who are already in informal communities who yeah. have people that Absolutely. they trust when they borrow money they exactly. have to verify by three four five people have to verify someone so if you take the same thing in your trust ecosystem and say well before you still loan money to this person before you do x the same amount of people have to verify and you have to then look at the trust relationship and the trust interface then to create a credit value for that individual to then say, okay well this person is worthy or not and also the the, the, you know, the rational relationship with everybody else in their own ecosystem then becomes part of that value of the artificial intelligence. And it's just all data feeding back into what the person normally does and back into the That's system. That's such an important point. Uh, one of the things I say all the time is that the technologies that are really powerful are the ones that embrace our humanity rather than try to replace it. So we're not talking about trying to disrupt people's existing behavioral models. We're talking about trying to digitize digitize those behavioral models and make it easier for people to get things the way they're already accustomed to getting them or with, that fits their culture, that fits their own personality, their model of risk, their model of trust. And that's what Jamboro does, you know, basically taking ecosystems of informal sectors across Africa who have no access to their own data and just giving them a digital platform where they can actually now begin to access their data and learn a little bit more about themselves. Yeah even in that same lending or borrowing or microfinance institution, now they become valuable 
citizens that you know the big institutions can now take them on and I think that is where AI becomes very important this is one of the things that Cortex does you know Cortex it basically now seeing how can we use AI then to help to begin to map that person's value so that you as a, as a partner or whoever it is that wants to take that information you can then be able to see okay what do I do with that information and how can I then give back value to that person based on the information that I have on them and we, we're talking about insurance earlier on how That's you can exactly actually right. personalize and customize insurance values based on actually group theories. That's exactly right. And for us, we, we come at it from this point of view of trust as a foundational piece of infrastructure that needs to be there across every sector, whether we're talking about the platform for nannies or for housekeepers or doctors or taxis or money lending. Uh, trust is foundational to all of these sectors, and I think actually that foundational layer of trust and our focus on that is what has really kept us going as an AI company, and it's what has inspired most of our investors, guys like SoftBank Groups, uh, DeepCore, and Xeroth AI, some of these big names in AI from outside of the continent, to now say, okay, here's a small African startup based in Nairobi. We've never invested in Kenya, we've never invested in Africa, but this is not an African technology, this is a global technology that just happens to come out of Africa. And that's it, you know, it just happens to come out of Africa. And if you think, I mean, the, the summit that just happened in Japan, yes. Africa summit, and one of the core things that came out of there was agriculture. Absolutely. You know, how do we use artificial intelligence to actually drive the growth of food? Yeah. How do we use AI to, you know, to develop our farming community? How do we use AI to grow more food in this continent? And it goes all the way back down to actual soil preservation. Not just, you know, and when people talk about AI and agriculture, they actually sometimes don't see the correlation. But it's a massive area where artificial intelligence based on data collection is so important from the soil to the, the seed to the input to the fertilizers to what the person grows to the climate condition to the output operation and if you're able to map this properly with existing data I think in this continent will be will provide more food will be able to actually preserve more food and also create more value for our farming and agricultural community and this is some of the reasons why you know for me AI is a passionate thing it's not just about the technology like you said in the beginning it's about the use case of the technology. John, I gotta say, always bringing it back home to the things that matter, the important issues, the important problems, and staying focused on that. That's great. I always love chatting with you, man. We're in Africa, we're doing AI, and this is AI TV.